does it but you got to take them out your clutch will explode literally like honda doesn't pay me cowie doesn't pay me i'm not talking good or bad on anything i'm just telling you what i think and what i know and i know these clutches will explode i know some might already happened to what's up guys we're here we got the 22 honda crf 250r this is lawson king's bike um if y'all know me um I, I live in houston texas i train a lot i live in tomball um, it's outside of Houston and I ride at Three Palms a lot. I train out there all the time. Um, but I come out here to West Texas and Seminole all the time to work with Lawson and some other riders out here. But Lawson just got this new bike. He's been on Yamaha's, um, was it 19 and 20 model? Yeah, 19 and 20. So a 19 and 20 model bike he's been on for since 1920. This new Honda came out and I really liked my old Honda. So I've had a 2018 and a 2020 Honda 250 and the handling comfort i loved it like the bike was awesome but they just didn't have the bottom and they needed so this new honda came out and you know honda's not going to make one bike and then come out with another one and it's worse so we just knew everything's going to be an improvement and we saw in the review videos other people talking about it that it's faster so we're like okay well if it's got more bottom in it it's not going to be less comfortable than the old bike so it's got to be pretty good right so uh, we talked about it and then he ended up making the move to Honda. He was kind of torn between Honda and Cowie. Um, we're not proponent, proponents of the Air Force. We don't like Air Force. Don Cowie's for the last year. You can see my bike in the background there. Um, <clears throat> I'm on a 450 now. I've been on two of these for the last year. So I'm able to compare this to, the, to a Cowie. So if there's anybody out there trying to make the side between Honda and Cowie, this would be a good video for you. What do you think about it? Is there anything that stands out that you really like or you really hate about it? Uh, just overall the rider triangle it's very it has a very comfy triangle you sit in the bike and you go yeah this is a bike can go fast on it it's super easy to grip it's lightweight it's it's just all around the best bike i think so <clears throat> today when i got on it first the one first thing i noticed on this thing is right here on the shroud it's super like it just comfy. fits in your leg it's crazy i've never sat on a bike that fits so good right here in your legs. Now, with my Kawasaki, I feel that pretty good. Dude, right here, it's crazy. It's like when you get your leg up to come up in a corner, it's like the bike wants your leg to be there. It is so comfortable to get it in there. The bike really promotes you to, to grip the bike with your leg when you yeah. put your leg out. It's not like overly wide. It's not like it's your legs sticking out real far. It's not like you're forcing yourself to get your legs in. I mean, really, if you come into corners and you get your leg up, it's almost like the bike just like forces you to keep your legs in that spot because it's just so comfortable right through here. And we put two hours on this thing today. Yeah. So two hours on the bike and we, we did a lot of riding, did some videos, we did some suspension testing. The seat, it's thin. I like the thinness of the seat and you can grip it very good. Like I said, you kind of fall through it a little bit sometimes, but I think once it breaks in, it'll be it'll just have some more comfort to it. Whole rider triangle. So for those of you that don't know, rider triangle is your handlebars to the seat to the pegs three points make a line triangle okay so <clears throat> from here to about halfway down the exhaust that's about where your legs will be across the bike right so side comfort for your legs where your legs are going to be your knee from out when i i have a training school that i do and that's why i come out here i train with lawson so i i teach you want to squeeze from your ankles to your knees you don't want to just squeeze knees you wanna, so from your ankles to your knees on this bike, there's nothing that hangs up. You don't ever feel like when you lift your foot off the peg, get your foot up or you're shifting, you're transitioning, your feet position, anything like that, you never feel like you're like, oh man, my, my boots are hanging on something. I know on my older, back in like 2017, I was on Yamaha's and the subframe bolt on that bike, oh, dude, it's would, terrible. it would hang on my boot all the time and it would like chew up my boots. I like, have a hole in my boot from that. It's so bad. On this thing, you don't have that. The frame is thicker than the subframe bolts. The exhaust comes out at a nice angle. The motor isn't in the way of anything. The plastic's very sleek, it's very slim, but it's not so skinny, you can't squeeze it. I feel like, on, yeah. like say on Kawasaki's, on the previous models, I felt like I couldn't squeeze it. I just felt like it was so narrow, I couldn't get anything out of it. Yeah. So, did you feel like you hung up or anything like that? No, honestly, it was it was really, really smooth feeling. I really enjoyed it because like, it's like, like you said, coming off the back of the bikes, I get hung up on the subframe a lot of the time on top of my boot. There's some areas that come off the subframe. Yeah, and if you look at this bike from a side angle, from the seat to the peg, 
it's it's a smooth transition the whole way down the frame doesn't stick out past the plastic or vice versa and there's nothing weird like that and like you said with the yamahas it yeah. there's like areas where you feel like you don't have contact points in the bike with this you have straight contact all across your rider triangle the, the comfort of this thing is just insane it, has, it really has all the right lines to it it's, yeah it's, it's really nice super smooth so with all that that's first impression of just sitting on the bike how do i feel when i sit on it so once we got out on the track first thing the <clears throat> suspension on this thing comes a little bit um stiff i was told around 180 pounds what it sprung for so i say a little bit stiff if you're around 180 pounds it's great for you um but i'm 168 how much are you 145 probably 145 150 in that area so for us it's a little bit oversprung but we were able to get it pretty comfortable actually like where we're pretty happy with it um it's got showa suspension on it um, some of the I, I've heard and read a couple things that they actually have some a kit internals in these forks I don't know anything about it, but I heard that so if that matters to you You got some a kit stuff that comes stock inside these things But we got out on the track before we made any adjustments to the suspension the fork height was at three millimeters and the sag static sag was at 40 was a 40 or 41 I'm gonna say it was 41. It was 41 so we have static sag at 41 ideally get the right spring rate so he'll be sending the suspension off to get set up and once he sends the suspension to get set up gets the correct spring rates for him then we'll be able to get that rider static sag right where it needs yeah. to be but before we made any adjustments when we got out of the track what was your first initial impression of the suspension i to me it's definitely stiff i highly recommend it you can understand what the bike's doing a little bit better so that's what i did for him I told him like let's not adjust anything leave it alone let's let the frame break in so that way he could feel the difference of the frame and then we, had, we did oval track day one day two did the same oval track but backwards so it had a much different flow actually it worked out really yeah, good. good but what was your feeling of the frame when you felt it kind of break in i uh, it was you could definitely feel it flex better over the bumps when you're coming over the yeah. bumps and entering the turns it was it was a lot better yeah like so we first got on it and we had some decent um, bumps coming in on this oval track we did, and it was probably about 50 yard straightaways, something like that, 40 yards, something like that. Yeah, somewhere around there. And we had some decent bumps. And on day one, when the frame was brand new, the bike's brand new, hadn't been ridden yet, it was deflecting like crazy. Like the bike, like, like I said, sat on it, super comfortable. You start riding that thing, you get in some bumps, you're trying to set up for a rut. If there wasn't like a just a nice built up rut, it was def deflecting like crazy. Like I didn't even want to ride that thing until I got into that rut. Like it was like the front end was doing this coming into turns. But on the day two, you could feel the frame flex right away. Like oh, yeah. the, the frame broke in. I think what we have, you put it now, which, how much you put on the first day? Uh, first day it's like put, 0.7 or something. Yeah, 0.7, probably around there. It was like 0.7 on day one. And then by the end of day two, you had two hours. Yep, two hours. So we put 1.3 hours on day two and it was about halfway through the day. So that would have been like 0.6 hours or whatever it was, yep. a little over half an hour. And so 45 minutes or so of time on the bike. And we, he came up to me and he goes, I think the frame broke in. I'm like, whatever. And then I rode it. I'm like, yeah, it did. Like we didn't adjust the suspension. It just got easier to ride. And then that's where we get into the suspension. So um, the frame kind of broke in two hours on the bike came out here today we're at andrews mx out in andrews texas near midland if anybody knows that that in texas um so like i said suspension comes a little bit stiff so we didn't want to throw off the sag too much so we left the static sag around 40 to 41. um so stock at um we dropped the forks down flush so i felt like i was coming into corners the bike just felt stink bug right so i, I thought we did lower the rear by adding some sag but we know that static sag is already where we want it to be i don't want to add more sag so that static sag will be off the bike balance will be off so i thought let's drop the forks and once we drop the forks bring that front end up and it's we're evening it out that way and immediately i felt like coming in corners i'm like man the front end just felt like super raked out and but once i got a feel for that came in the corners you just move up just a little bit more in the corners and it sucks that front end down and it would bite and it'd go and so whenever I we, we set up the forks at flush, do you feel like right at home? It is suck. Well, I as soon as I sat on the bike, I definitely noticed it, but uh, it was a lot easier to come to turns. The bike was yeah. so, I liked it more. So he's learning suspension testing. So 
what we figured out with that was we rate we drop the forks flush it raises the front end up but it, what it also does it makes the forks ride a little bit higher in the stroke so you get a little bit more hold up coming into your turn so yeah so it wasn't packing so like before it was like stink bug a lot of weight on the front end you come into the turn once we get into the turn it was great it cornered on the dime so, so good right but getting to that corner was so hard to do because it was just so stink bug it felt like the pocket where your legs sit through the number plate so nice your legs felt right at home there but with that stink bug feeling you really felt like your your legs were like almost pulling against that because you were leaning forward so once we dro we dropped them down raise that front end better hold up more stable coming into the turn so now we didn't have that same front end bite in the turn we were able to get there and get smoother now we can flow through that corner and we weren't trying to fight the bike to get into it yeah is that what you felt yeah i felt i was, I was having to fight it a lot yeah so we ended up softening the forks um i think we softened it six clicks overall yeah i think about six clicks so we softened it six clicks from stock and once we did that <clears throat> we felt like when we did it front and then rear the front and rear try to keep it balanced as we'd go so we softened the forks six clicks um we softened the shock four clicks, I think it's four clicks. Yeah, somewhere around six in the front four in the rear and that kept the balance feel but if the, the bike was packing like it's so like you came up to me and said like i feel like the rear is off and we kind of like talked over it went over some things we actually sped up the rebound front and rear it comes very slow on rebound which depending on the track you're riding that might be great for this track for us today it, it was off like it was, it was all over, like front and rear especially especially landing off the jump packing really bad yeah so like i i told him i was like man i i feel like we need to stick the shock back up i feel like we're we had softened the forks and we were trying to get the bike softer and i told him the shock was bottoming on me and i'm like man we might need to stick the shock back up and i thought like hey let's just try rebound see what that will do so i just immediately six clicks on the rebound i did six clicks on the rebounds faster and right away it because when you speed up rebound it actually speeds up the stroke which can soften your suspension but if your rebounds too too slow did i say too slow the first time i don't know what i said i don't know either we I was, softened i was it. thinking about it yeah i don't know i think i said slow like twice i was, I, was I don't know i was just thinking like, in my head i was like thinking about the suspension moving anyways we felt like it was too soft so we're like okay i'm just like Let's just see what this does. So we sped it up six clicks, did that, and it wasn't packing anymore. So that's where I was going with the, by slowing it down and start packing. It felt like it was too soft because it was just riding so low, but it was riding so low because it was packing. Sped it up, now it's able to get back up higher in the stroke. We're able to use the full stroke of that suspension. So once I sped up the rebound, you're pretty happy with it, huh? Yeah, it was a lot better. A lot better. Like it's, it just, it tracked. I mean, because we went back and forth, but we went, like where it was halfway and we just really felt like six clicks like just worked you couldn't really like before when it was actually you couldn't get the turn very well it's so hard to set up for the turn because you're back in your bike you're doing yeah it's, and some of these jumps out here are kind of like checkup jumps yep. like there's this there's this one table and you come to the face of you check it up and then you land in this turn I, I felt like I was bottoming out in the face of this because you're like it's a long straightaway charging breaking for the jump and then kind of like scrub instead of the turn I feel like I was bottoming out like coming in that well once we sped the rebound up that we really didn't feel like it was doing this I felt like it was it was staying up here and you know just tracking the way it needed to so that felt a lot better for and me another thing going into the going into the roller section it was real noticeable when we, we sped up the rebound because yeah. it, it dropped into the pocket yep so you could get you could hook up and double in and you could get the triple out yeah on the forks we sped up the rebound on the forks as well we did two clicks on the forks right yeah two clicks so two clicks we tried two clicks faster we tried two clicks slower two clicks slower it was it, packed. it was just bad it just it didn't feel if you slow down the rebound from where it starts it just terrible it didn't feel good especially on the like those checkup jumps like i was saying some of, some of the faster chatter it's like, it was just like yeah it's like heavy in your hands just didn't feel right yeah. so once we sped it up it just felt like the front end just like stuck like it's just nice like in between each bump it wasn't balancing it wasn't skating around didn't feel unstable is you just come to the turn boom you're there and you're in and out big thing can't forget this 
These That's Hondas right. come with judder springs, dude. Don't even ride your Honda until you pull the clutch pack out and pull out the judder spring. I know it's like a brand new bike. I don't want to work on this thing. They don't come with grease in any of the bearings across this bike anywhere. The linkage, the stem up here up top, the wheels, no bearings come with grease on them. It's like vegetable oil almost. Yeah, it's terrible. So before he even rode this, I'm like, dude, strip this thing apart, grease those bearings. And he did, and there was like, the back wheel was like completely dry. Dude, the axle, there's no grease on it. Nothing. Front, it had some, but not a lot. The front wasn't, it had, compared to the back, it had grease, but compared to how it had, grease, it had no grease. It had grease, but you could have grabbed it, grabbed the axle with your hand, and then gone eat some chips and queso, yeah. and not be thinking about the grease on your hand. Um, what about the linkage? How was the grease in those? You know, it wasn't that good either. You, like the crevices inside the linkage where the pin set, it wasn't filled with grease. It was just there. It was almost like they sprayed some kind of lubricant oil on it. Yeah, it was like a chain loop in there. Almost like vegetable oil. It was just not good at all. Like yeah. it's, it, you cannot overlook these things. I, I tell people all the time, people are like, man, the bike's knocking. I'm like, no, dude, the, yeah, the bike's knocking, but it's because you didn't the grease those things. Shot. You, they get hot and everybody tells me all the time like oh they're they're sealed bearings all this yeah they're sealed they got seals in them i get all that but they move a lot there's a lot of impact on those things they get hot there, you yeah. know stuff's going on dirt's hitting it all these other things i know they're sealed whatever pack those things with grease you'll make them last longer i take the tires off change the tires sprockets whatever it is repack those bearings keep your bearings fresh if you keep maintenance you change the oil on your bike change your air filter the grease is no different. Keep up with that stuff, and the stuff's gonna last for forever. In your clutch, take that judder spring out of there. It's, I know it's a new bike, you don't wanna mess with it, you don't wanna take things out, especially in the motor. Maybe you don't know how to take the mo the clutch out. I've got a video for that, link, link in the description below. It's about a Henson clutch, but you can still figure out, how do I get my clutch out of here, right? So take that thing out of there, and then there's a judder spring. It's got a flat washer with like a beveled washer sitting on top of it at the very bottom of your clutch pack. And then the bottom fiber is thinner than the rest. That judder spring, they put those in there because it's supposed to help with the clutch pull, make it smoother, more easy, whatever. But, and it does, but those judder springs cause the clutch to slip super bad. So yeah. clutch starts slipping. What happens when the clutch slips? You bake your oil. What happens when your oil isn't working as good as it can? Your clutch slips more. What happens when the clutch slips more? It's hot. You got a thin fiber, like say the rest are, they're not, but say they're this thick, and then the rest were this thick, half as thick. So you got one at the bottom. The bottom is the hottest place because it's closer to the center of the motor, right? Yeah. Take that that bottom fiber, the thinnest one, and put it at the top of the pack. That's the, the top closest to the cover here. That's the coolest part of your clutch pack. I would really just advise, call your shop, your local shop, whatever your dealer is, and say, hey, I just wanna get one clutch plate, because you can buy just one at a time. And get one, make sure you get a regular one, not the thin one. Take the jar spring out. Temporarily, if you have to, put the thin one up top, but ideally, get a, a thicker one and put it in that place of that one. Um, like if you get a Henson clutch or a Clues clutch, anything like that, they don't have judder springs. The aftermarket ones don't have it because they don't work good. I don't know why Honda does it, but you gotta take them out. Your clutch will explode, literally. Like Honda doesn't pay me, Cowie doesn't pay me. I'm not talking good or bad on anything. I'm just telling you what I think and what I know. And I know these clutches will explode. I know somebody's already happened too. Those judder springs, they're not they, good. They groove the, the steel. Yeah, it, they cut into that steel, it starts spinning, slipping, it's just, one thing after another it just gets worse and worse and then you gotta rebuild a motor on your brand new ten thousand dollar bike right so that's not good we don't want that so just take my advice take the judder spring out if you don't trust me call up any performance shop call twisted development call tokyo mods call whoever i don't care call any shop call galvin at evo he does motor work call galvin they will tell you to take that judder spring out i know i'm just like a long-haired idiot that rides a cowie because i don't know nothing why would i be talking about a honda i don't know either call galvin he'll tell you Evo suspension. But yeah, I felt like the clutch pull, the engagement, the... It was really smooth. Yeah, like it, it, it didn't solid. feel like it was so torquey, like it was hard to handle. Like a lot of people complain that these don't come with hydraulic clutch. I don't think that's a bad thing. As long as you check your preset. The only thing I don't like about the cable clutch is that you have to adjust it every now and then. But it's fine because hydraulic clutch, you don't have to mess with it. But I think cable clutches have like a more consistent... feel. Yeah, like it's got... I don't know, it's just the way it pulls. It you just feel the clutch. You can feel what it's doing a little bit better. Hydraulic, it's almost like you're just pulling a lever that's making a difference, you know? Yeah. Here, you're 
you pull that lever, you can feel what the clutch is doing almost. So it's just easier for me to yeah. kind of control what I'm doing there. So the high, the cable clutch is not a knock on Honda. I'm sure they'll end up going to hydraulic clutch, but for now with the cable clutch, I don't think it's a problem. Yamaha still has it and it's working just fine. <clears throat> and Suzuki has a cable clutch. So, and we all know that's just solid quality. Yeah, you can't beat it. It's good. Their electric kickstart. Yeah, I bet you in 2023, Suzuki's gonna have an extended kickstarter just Probably. for ease of kicking. Something I'm really big on, when you get a new bike or even the bike you have now, whatever, where your levers are at when you grab it, move them in. Now, of course, I don't, I'm not saying like all the way in, you know, whatever. Find a comf comfortable spot for you, but if they're in a little bit, you turn your hands, you can grab them, and it forces you to rotate your hands. So now your angle of your hands this way, right? And you're not doing, you're not death gripping this way. So it loosens your grip and your arm will get in a better position, more control. So if you move, say, the lever this way on the handlebar, it's just gonna be easier for you. On these Hondas, they've got a map switch next to the kill switch. It's made in the same little deal. Um, it's got three settings, map one, two, and three, right? So it come, map one is stock, map two is mellow, map three is supposed to be the more aggressive, hard hitting one. So I haven't tried two. I did one and three. I know on my previous Honda, and I should have tried it. My previous Hondas, the 250s, I hated two. It, it would rev for forever, but to get to that point was just impossible, right? So I didn't like two. Um, but on this thing today, between one and, so I didn't try two, so I can't speak on it, but between one and three, what were your thoughts on that? Well, so three, like you said, it's a more aggressive one, but for me, three, it didn't have such of a hard pull from bottom to mid, but it, it revved out real far. It was pretty nice when you're going into a long section, you can kind of click up and just carry your gear through there. But it was weird because I felt like one, the, uh, the bottom to mid hit a lot harder, but it, it did sign off noticeably faster. Yeah. From like first to second. Yeah, so like, <clears throat> second gear. I, I don't know how they did the map settings. I don't work for Honda. But the difference in one and three, I've seen in some other videos and they say like, yeah, we didn't really notice it. I'm like, dude, we, we did a section today and I, were, I hit that section, came back around next lap, changed the map, hit the section again. I went straight to, I'm like, dude, this is like so noticeable. Like map three, which like I said, to me, doesn't make sense because yeah. map normally the more hard hitting the bottom end is means it's leaner. And then that means it's gonna sign off sooner because it doesn't have to make sure all those things it's not gonna run it's gonna rev out as far so you will a richer setting would rev out far that's why map two previously would rev out further well today it seemed like you could run on map three you could run second gear like crazy far oh yeah this thing. you could you could carry a second real yeah they, and it was crazy if like a two fit and second gear pulls good like it's yeah, not it's, like it's, it's like it's not like it's lacking in power no Power's there. It didn't feel like you're like in second gear, you're like, man, like, hurry up, come on, I need to get to third. It was like, all right, I'll just stay here for a while. And like, you're building power. It's a pretty big jump out here today. And I came out of the corner, second gear held it wide open and launched this thing, hit it. I didn't have time to shift to third. Second was just pulling and it pulled just fine. There's some other guys that were struggling on it and second gear was able to get it. Mm -hmm. But if you hit map one on this thing, it's a different kind of power. Really noticeable. Yeah, it's it doesn't pull as long in between each gear. It shortens your shift points, I would say, and but it hits harder in the corner. So I yep. think maybe depending on the track you're riding. Yeah, but you definitely want map map three for a clay, a hard clay track. Like. Yeah, because you, you you don't have to shift it much. You can rev it out. You can run it longer or like a. Yeah, be real smooth here. yeah. So if you're in a tight track, I'd probably say map one. Yeah. If you're in like a real wide open track where you just run in gears, right? I'd probably say map three. Yeah. But it's noticeable difference, and I wouldn't say there's necessarily one that's better than the other. On these new Hondas, and I think this is only on the 250. I don't think the 450. Yeah. The 250 comes with Pirelli Scorpion. Uh, what the mid soft something? Yeah, the mid soft. I think they're 33s. MX 32 or 32. 32. 32. So <clears throat> these are the Pirelli 32s. It comes with a 100 uh, 9019 back tire. These things are very narrow. Like you look at it, you're like, dude, this tire is like so narrow. This thing sucks. Yeah. Well, racing through the nationals this year, the Pirelli guys, I was talking to them about switching to Pirelli. They said they recommend running 14 pounds of air in these things. On Dunlops, I always run 13. On four, on the Scorpions, the Pirellis, they have softer sidewalls and they flex a bit more. So you're gonna want a little bit more air in those tires. But these versus your Dunlops, how'd you feel on them? 
and honestly the the rear tire is pretty solid but the front you know i do i like the dunlop which, which one do we run usually the 33 it's a 33 yeah i like that 33 it's it's a little bit better just because it doesn't i wouldn't say i wouldn't say push but there's just something different about it i can't quite tell what it is but the back's a solid tire it does hook up good the front you know it could be better but it's not a bad tire i'd i'd leave i'd go take it out and race it yeah so you're saying it feels different what's different about it right so the back it's a very narrow tire but it doesn't feel narrow on the track right no, it has it, plenty of bite yeah it. it tracks good side track like everything it feels great on the track you don't feel like you're riding a narrow tire like if you're on a 450 and you have a 120 normally and you drop it down to 110 or 100 you can feel that difference yeah so with this tire being so narrow which is weird because it's a 100 just like a dunlop 100 but a dunlop 100 is wider than this tire yeah. weird how that works i guess it's the, the I guess it's softer sidewall so much yeah but the front tire i don't like the front tire maybe in certain conditions it would work better or worse to me i feel like i can feel it rolling on the rim so i'm coming into corners so when i'm if i'm coming to the left hand turn i'm pushing into it i feel like the tires like the rims pushing off and it's like so i think that's what you were trying to get at is it's it doesn't feel like the dunlop in some areas it feels just fine right yeah. but if you're pushing into a corner and you don't have like a banked up whether it be a coming like a wall or a berm or rut whatever yeah i did notice that if you don't have something like that then i really feel like it's just kind of like rolling and i think that's why they recommend the 14 pounds of air but it's not a bad tire i could put this tire on my bike and put down a lap time just as fast as i can with my dunlops so on i'm pretty sure all four strokes come with this now um but on two i really like to do it the, inside the air box if you take the air filter out there's a screen in there and or some bikes it's made into the into the air filter cage so there's a back yeah. it's a backfire screen is what it is kind of like the yamaha yeah so the air the yamaha it's made into the air box the honda it's made into the air box just the same um so like cowies and suzuki's um i believe ktm as well it's made into the yeah. the actual filter screen or filter cage and there's that screen in there well unfortunate yeah and like which for me on a 450 i actually like it it mellows out the power a little bit doesn't snap so hard well on 250 you want a little bit more snap so we left we took the back fire screen out of it right away we didn't even ride with it in there i've ridden with them in the past they just it takes that immediate hit out of the throttle the connectivity from the throttle to the tire is just not as good when you have a back fire screen in there it's almost like there's i want to say a delay but if you've if you've ridden two strokes that don't have gnarly mod motors in them that are like super perfect and crisp I feel like that's kind of what it feels like. It's like you get on the gas and it hits, but it's not like it's alive and awake right yeah. away. You take the backfire screen out, and I feel like the the throttle's like connected to the tires. Like you hit it and you're going. So it's not necessarily gonna make the bike crazy faster. It does improve a little bit of power because it gets faster airflow. But I don't say it's necessarily to do it for the power. I say it's, it's to do it for the comfort of the connectivity of the throttle to the tire. So yeah. did you feel like it was too jumpy or too mellow in that sense? Honestly, I thought it was pretty good. I didn't think it was too mellow because I felt like the, well, the Yamaha had a lot more torque, right? And this bike, I'm really happy with the throttle. It, you crack the throttle and it's right there. If you're like a engine kind of nerd, these engines just sound so tight. They just, they sound so good. Han, or Cowies and Yamahas, they and make a loose. lot of engine noise. Like it's noise. it's almost like you're like, oh dude, we right. need to like look at this thing. That's just how they are. Yeah. These Honda motors, so tight, like it just sounds nice, right? And that's how you feel with the throttle. It's like you hit it, Yamahas have more low end torque, they pull harder, but it doesn't feel like that low end pull, it's not that connectivity like this thing. So, so light. Which, if you're in a high wind, situation Not like the greatest today we had some wind oh dude it, there was some jumps that you jump and you're like blowing sideways like, you literally feel like a, you're on a 125 here on that's, that's honestly how i felt i was yeah. I in sick in the same area on the track from 125 it's so nice yeah it's so like in the corners like i was telling him like there was a corner on my 450 it was hard for me to get to it there's a, a left to a right and it was hard for me to get to my four to it on the 450 on this thing came with the left hand corner stayed on the gas leaned over and no problem like, it rides handling wise it's like great. a good 125 like, it just you can put the bike wherever you want it to yeah. go it feels awesome yeah 
Yeah, I really like that. It sounds good. It doesn't sound junky. It doesn't sound heavy. It doesn't sound like lethargic. It doesn't just nice. So, it, yeah, it's just crisp, clean, nice. It's, it helps the bike feel like, like I said, yeah. it just, the bike just feels like you can do whatever you want with this thing. <sighs> brakes on this bike, I don't know if they are different brakes than the previous years. They feel great. Yeah. I don't have any complaints to them. I didn't feel like they didn't feel spongy after riding them, doing some motos on them. We did a lot of laps on this thing. We put two hours on it today. I never felt like they, like the, the brake line expanded. Yep. I don't think it needs an over uh, steel braided line. Yep. I don't, none of that. I feel, I feel like it Solid. rides really good. I could take this bike right now and go race it. Yep. Would it be competitive in the Pro Nationals? Well, everybody there has got mod motors. If you're racing this thing in the stock class or even a local amateur event, you can run this thing just fine. This thing comes stock so good. Like it's, it's, it's comfortable. Even the foot pegs, I always tell people, get rid of your stock foot pegs, they suck. These stock foot pegs are Actually, sick. Yeah. They grip so good, dude. Like you're, when I first got on this thing, I went to like move my foot. I'm like, I can't move my foot. Like it was so stuck on there. I'm like, this is yeah. sick. I've got titanium scar pegs on my bike and they're awesome, right? These feel like that. Now I will say stock pegs generally wear out faster than like say a titanium peg. So yeah. once they do start to wear, get new pegs at that point. But the way they come stock, they're good. When you put your foot on the brake, brakes very grippy for some yeah. people this might even be too grippy it's like if this is too grippy for you just shave it down a little bit all right guys well i think that's it i think we cover everything on the bike great bike you can take this thing racing right out of the box i think you can compete on this bike just as good as you can probably compete on anything else i know i can line up on this thing and go race it right now they sweet awesome package super fun comfortable nimble easy to ride oh yeah a lot of fun like the bike a lot a lot of fun we're going to put a lot more time on this thing with Lawson Racing and Training. Yep. And you might see this bike some more throughout some, doing, maybe we'll get some different stuff on here. We'll do more, market. we'll figure out how to make these, the suspension handle better. And we'll get back with you on that. Yeah. Well, until next time guys, please like and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment for something you want to see on this bike. Maybe a different bike. Maybe I got Cowies, um, whatever you want to see. I have a bike build coming up here pretty soon. Stay in tune for that. Yeah. If you like old two strokes, sick. Stay in, in tune for what I got going on. Hit the notification bell. That's going to be so sick. I'm super pumped. It's an older model two-stroke. And I'm taking the thing racing. We're going to hit some pro-ams. It's going to be awesome. Y'all are going to enjoy it. So hit the notification bell. Leave a comment if anything y'all like to see. Don't care what it is. Let me know. If you want to see more of this guy's face, I don't know why you'd want that. But if you want to, let okay. me know. I wouldn't go that far. Yeah, you're right. I'll see you guys in the next ones. Peace.